that was good to sing of God's great love for us and how he's going to take us to be with him forever. Let me just mention a few notices and things that are coming up in the life of the church. Uh, after this service, we've got the discovery meeting for those who are 11 and over. This evening, do come back for the next in our psalm series. Uh, this evening, we're looking at Psalm 57, a psalm for lockdown. This week ahead, we've got our, our sort of usual meetings, a Tuesday morning Bible study, a Tuesday evening prayer meeting and a Wednesday evening Bible study. If you've not been to those before, I do encourage you to come along. It'd be great to have you come along on Zoom and uh, it, we can uh, talk with one another. We can look at the Bible together. We can pray together. Do come to those times. It'd be great to see you. If you need the details, do let me know and I can send those to you. Next Sunday in the morning, we'll be concluding our series in the book of Daniel. And then in the evening, turning to another psalm. So our plans are this coming week, uh, God willing. Well, we're now going to have the first part of our Bible reading. In our Bible reading today, Daniel turns to the Lord in prayer. So we're going to begin by listening to Daniel's prayer to the Lord. The reading is taken from Daniel chapter 9, uh, verses 1 to 19. Daniel chapter 9, starting at verse 1. In the first year of Darius, son of Xerxes, a Mede by descent, who was made ruler over the Babylonian kingdom, in the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood from the scriptures, according to the word of the Lord given to Jeremiah the prophet, that the desolation of Jerusalem would last 70 years. So I turned to the Lord God and pleaded with him in prayer and petition, in fasting and in sackcloth and ashes. I prayed to the Lord my God and confessed, O Lord, the great and awesome God, who keeps his covenant of love with all who love and obey his commands, we have sinned and done wrong. We have been wicked. We have rebelled. We have turned away from your commands and laws. We have not listened to your servants, the prophets, who spoke in your name to our kings, our princes and our fathers, and to all the people of the land. Lord, you are righteous, but this day we are covered with shame. The men of Judah and people of Jerusalem and all Israel, both near and far, in all the countries where you have scattered us because of our unfaithfulness to you. O Lord, we and our kings, our princes and our fathers are covered with shame because we have sinned against you. The Lord our God is merciful and forgiving, even though we have rebelled against him. We have not obeyed the Lord our God or kept the laws he gave us through his servants the prophet. All Israel has transgressed your law and turned away, refusing to obey you. Therefore the curses and sworn judgments written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, have been poured out on us because we have sinned against you. You have fulfilled the words spoken against us and against our rulers by bringing up upon us great disaster. Under the whole heaven, nothing has ever been done like what has been done to Jerusalem. Just as it is written in the law of Moses, all this disaster has come upon us. Yet we have not sought the favour of the Lord our God by turning from our sins and giving attention to your truth. The Lord did not hesitate to bring disaster upon us, for the Lord our God is righteous in everything he does, yet we have not obeyed him. Now, O Lord our God, who brought your people out of Egypt with a mighty hand, and who made for yourself a name that endures to this day, we have sinned, we have done wrong. O Lord, in keeping with all your righteous acts, turn away your anger and your wrath from Jerusalem, your city, your holy hill. Our sins and the iniquities of our fathers have made Jerusalem and your people an object of scorn, 
to all those around us. Now, our God, hear the prayers and petitions of your servant. For your sake, O Lord, look with favour on your desolate sanctuary. Give ear, O God, and hear. Open your eyes and see the desolation of the city that bears your name. We do not make requests of you because we are righteous, but because of your great mercy. O Lord, listen. O Lord, forgive. O Lord, hear and act. For your sake, O my God, do not delay, because your city and your people bear your name. Thank you, George, for reading uh, for us. Well, having heard Daniel's prayer, it'd be good, wouldn't it, to turn to the Lord in prayer now for ourselves and for the world. So let's pray, shall we? Father God, we thank you so much that we can come to you in prayer. We thank you we can come to you in prayer, not because of our goodness or righteousness in ourselves, but we can come to you in prayer because of your great mercy. Lord, we thank you for that mercy that you showed to us most greatly in what you've done for us in the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you that he died so that we could be saved, so that we could be your people. Lord, we thank you so much for that. Lord, we are sorry for our sins. We are sorry when we have failed to do what you would have us do. Lord, please forgive us for our sins, our trespasses, our failures. Lord, we thank you we can be confident if we're trusting in the Lord Jesus, you do forgive us. So Lord, we thank you we can come to you like this in prayer. And we pray especially to those who are struggling at this time. Lord, we pray for those who have been bereaved, those who are unwell, those who are struggling perhaps with work or with family commitments, those who are perhaps struggling in other ways. Lord, we do commit them to you and pray that in all things you'll help people to look to you and to trust in you. Father, as we look at the world and at our country, we pray for wisdom for the government, for those in parliament, for those making decisions. Lord, we pray that they might act in a just and right fashion. Lord, we pray that they may show care for all the people. Lord, we pray they may make good and wise decisions. Lord, in lots of difficult decisions to make, Lord, we pray that maybe that they'll even look to you for that wisdom that they need. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we're going to uh, have our second part of our reading now. In the first part of the reading, we heard Daniel's prayer. And now we're going to hear that God's answer to that prayer. Continuing in Daniel chapter 9, verse 20. While I was speaking and praying, confessing my sin and the sin of my people, Israel, and making my request to the Lord my God for his holy hill. While I was still in prayer, Gabriel, the man I had seen in the earlier vision, came to me in swift flight about the time of the evening sacrifice. He instructed me and said to me, Daniel, I have now come to give you insight and understanding. As soon as you began to pray, an answer was given, which I have come to tell you, for you are highly esteemed. Therefore, consider the message and understand the vision. Seventy sevens are decreed for your people and your holy city to finish transgression, to put an end to sin, to atone for wickedness, to bring in everlasting righteousness, to seal up vision and prophecy, and to anoint the most holy. Know and understand this. From the issuing of the decree to restore and rebuild Jerusalem, until the anointed one, the ruler, comes, there will be seven sevens and sixty-two sevens. 
it will be rebuilt with streets and a trench, but in times of trouble. After the 62 sevens, the anointed one will be cut off and will have nothing. The people of the ruler who will come will destroy the city and the sanctuary. The end will come like a flood. War will continue until the end and desolations have been decreed. He will confirm a covenant with many for one seven. In the middle of the seven, he will put an end to sacrifice and offering. And on a wing of the temple, he will set up an abomination that causes desolation until the end that is decreed is poured out on him. Thank you very much, Susan, for reading uh, for us. Well, as we're thinking about uh, prayer uh, and thinking about our lives, then I guess we we're conscious that perhaps often in life we might worry about things. You might be anxious about different things in life. I've got a few pictures here of things that might make us worried or anxious at the moment. Perhaps uh, this is what you're feeling at the moment. Perhaps you might feel anxious about uh, the coronavirus. That's apparently a coronavirus picture. Um, Perhaps you feel worried about that and about how it's all working out and uh, people who are ill uh, and what's happening in our world. You might be anxious about that. Perhaps you're anxious about the other issues in our world, where there's difficulty, where there's injustice, where there's pain, where life is hard for people in the world. Perhaps you're anxious about things that are wrong in your own life. Maybe you're conscious that there's ways in which you've not lived rightly, you've messed things up badly before God. And so you're worried about those things. They make you worried and anxious. Perhaps you're anxious and worried about people. Perhaps you're worried about people because you're concerned for them. Or perhaps they act in a way that's hurt you. Or maybe other reasons why you feel anxious. Perhaps you're anxious about the future. You're not quite sure what's going to happen in the coming weeks and months and years. You're anxious about what might happen in, in this life. Maybe even anxious beyond that to what might happen after this life. I guess often we are anxious about all sorts of things. Uh, but in the Bible, we're told what we should do uh, when we might feel anxious. See what Paul says in letters to Philippians. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Paul says to the Philippians, rather than be anxious, instead of that, come to the Lord in prayer. It's perhaps when we feel worried or anxious, maybe about these things, or maybe about something else entirely. Uh, rather than keeping on being feeling anxious, Paul says we should come to the Lord in prayer. We should come with, to him with uh, prayers and petitions. We should come with thanksgiving, recognising how he has answered our prayers, how he's shown us so much goodness and love in the past. And amazingly, we hear that God can bring us peace, that in our anxieties, in our worries, that God can bring us his peace. So that's what we should be doing if we feel anxious and worried today or this week. We should bring those things to the Lord in prayer. Well, let's pray now, shall we? If we think about that. Father God, we do pray that you'll help us to Continue to pray, even when we feel anxious or worried. Lord, we pray that our response to anxiety, to worry, might be to come to you in prayer. We pray we'll come with thanksgiving, recognising your goodness to us. And Lord, we pray that in difficult times you'll bring us your peace. Lord, we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, we're going to sing now. Uh, we're going to sing a hymn about how Jesus is a friend that we can come to at all times in prayer. What a friend we have in Jesus. And then after that, it'll be time for our sermon, our, our talk, Bible talk on that passage from Daniel chapter 9. 